Oh, it's going to be huge. And I think that affects the outcome of this game because Jalen Phillips went down about a, what three weeks ago against the Jets. And that was the thing, Chubb and, and Phillips on those bookends, and they were, they were giving quarterbacks hell. And now you have to probably bring in a guy. So he has to learn the defense now, you know, and I think that that's a, that'll be a big loss. I, you know, everything in retrospect is better. I don't think Bradley should have been in the game at that point. You're down by 30. I don't think Tua should have been in the game at that point. I know when coaches do the you never quit, you know, we're going to play 60 minutes, rah, 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 you know, old school football. I understand the thought process of it. But when you're out of a game like that and then you lose a guy during a playoff run, because that's what the playoffs are. The playoffs are you have to be a good team, but you have to be healthy. If the Dolphins are healthy, they can play with anybody in the league. But now you start getting these injuries after injuries, and that's when it's that's when it's going to go down here for the Dolphins. They're going to have to get a lot of interior pressure. You know, Van Ginkle can play, but he's not Jalen Phillips and Chubb not being there. I don't know who they move out. Maybe Agba, they move outside. So it's going to hurt them that they don't have the two guys that they paid a lot of damn money to get to that quarterback. I was going to ask you, and you brought it up, if you're on that team and he goes down, and I know you can't look back, but – you you didn't think he belonged out there with the game out of hand already. Yeah, it was just too late in the game. Like you're never supposed to quit. And I know you they bang that in players' heads, but there's also an intelligence part about it. It's like being a tough guy. Like I think of myself as a tough guy. I don't walk in the room scared of anybody. But if I look across and Mike Tyson standing there, I'm gonna be scared. It's smart. So there's tough and there's smart. And I think at, when that game at that juncture, down by that much, 30 plus points. You pull out the starters, you fold up camp, whatever you want to say, and you get ready for Buffalo Bills. Which that's going to have a lot of you know implications for playoff seeding if you get a home game. If you don't, sooner or later you have to think about that in the in totality of the big picture. So I love Mike McDaniel. I think he's the coach. I think we found one after going through a litany of coaches from Toronto to Cam Cameron to Joe Philbin. Those weren't great coaches. I really do believe Mike McDaniel is a great coach, but he made a bad decision leaving those starters in late. You mentioned interior help. You're seeing rumblings that do they bring in someone like Adamic and Sue who worked out recently? Is that a good fit? A veteran who who's obviously played in big games before as well. Oh yeah, I would I would like Sue to be there. But I you know I love Seeler. I love um Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins having an amazing season. I just think it has to be an edge guy. They had Jason Pierre Paul. They brought in JPP and then they released him. So he's been in the building at least. Maybe he knows the system, but. I think they have to get they have to get some edge guys. I think we're set in the middle. I wouldn't mind having Sue. You know, Dominic, he's not Detroit and Dominic and Sue anymore, but I believe he'll help, especially in, you know, stopping the run where the Bills are going to try to run the ball, especially what they've been doing recently with their success. So he could help, but I I think they have to go out and get another edge rusher. Because like I said, I like Van Ginkle. He gets to the quarterback, but once if they start concentrating on him, who's that other guy that's going to get attention away from him? Like Bradley, when Jalen would go crazy, then Bradley would start going wild because now they're leaning towards Jalen, they're sliding towards him, putting you know chipping backs on him. They have to get edge. They have to get edge of uh, uh, edge protection. They have to get guys that can come off the edge. So Sue would help, but I think it needs to be a defensive end. Oh, a lot of fun. You know, when you put these characters together, a lot of fun. And, you know, then it's it's kind of getting down to those top teams. So you're not covering, you know, 32 anymore. You're breaking it down to playoff teams. And so you can get a little more into it, a little more into the, you know, into the intricacies of the game and just uh, getting better together, you know, learning each other and just getting getting better and better like teams do. Any special guests or or special guys mic'd up for this show? Yeah, well, Dan Campbell was, and he's always an interesting character. And uh, a lot of a lot of bleeps when Dan Campbell's on. But Mike, it's it's funny because Mike Tomlin as well. So it's Campbell with Tomlin, two different coaching styles, two great coaches. And um, one of my high school players that I coach is actually uh, Zay Flowers for the Ravens, who's breaking rookie records, just having an amazing season. And I coached him in high school. So he came up to NFL Films, you know, actually flew up here, came up here to film. So it was pretty cool to show him around and uh, hopefully show him where he's going to be one day on one of these walls memorialized. How impressed have you been with what he's done this year. He's come off a big game and what they're doing right now. And Lamar probably locked up the MVP in that game. But how impressed are you having coached Zay? Oh, so impressed with knowing his story. Um, he's actually going to be on the pivot. So he shot a pivot episode too. Just his story. His father raised 15 kids by himself. His mother ended up passing. And it's crazy because I'm coaching him and I'm putting him at linebacker. I'm putting him at defensive end. Wherever the problem was, I would just throw Zay Flowers there because he was so good. And he kept telling me, he's like, Coach Crowder, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to the NFL. This is a 11th grader. I'm going to the NFL. I'm going to get drafted first round, and I'm going to ball out. 
okay, Zay, just go and get on the line and stop the run and leave me alone. And six years later, he gets drafted in the first round. Actually, I was there. We did the pivot um, at the at the draft. So I get to interview him as he told me six years before what was going to happen. And it's just an amazing kid with an amazing story that is an exceptional football player. And you're seeing it when he's out there with, with Lamar and – OBJ and just those weapons they have likely uh, Mark Andrews and he was healthy. They, they're loaded and the Ravens are the best team in the NFL right now. And Lamar wanted him. He got him and it seems like it's paying off. Oh yes. And he was just telling us, telling us how Lamar kind of took him under his wing and how OBJ works with him on his nutrition and OBJ, you know, with the injuries. So he's like, he's trying to preemptively not let Zay get injuries. And that's just beautiful to hear when you love a kid like I love Zay and seeing that these veterans, these guys that, what Lamar just signed for, half a billion dollars. Like, he doesn't have to, you know, go out of his way to work with Zay. But just knowing the character of the guys around the kid that's just getting in the league, just getting all this money, and just helping him out, it makes me feel good that he's around great veterans.